Let's go. What we're saying is you're just you're just you're just real real good. Thank you, thank you. He is real good. You guys are too nice to me. Even though it freaks me out, because I'm not, most of the time I think he's blade, and I gotta double check. And I'm like, wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> amen. Amen. I hadn't ever seen them in the same platoon together, like having you don't a conversation. Know that not the yeah. same person. But no, I do. I've seen them in the same platoon having together? a conversation. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I swear. <laughs> Two separate accounts. Seems legit. Yeah, they've had conversations before. In fact, they've had a conversation about how much Kronk sounds like him. Exactly. Yes. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here. If you're not in fear training, uh, please make your way here. It's going to be, uh, probably going to go for about a half hour-ish, going over some basic leadership uh, standards, some policies, and uh, some, some simple things, like I said, to get you started and kind of hammer in the, uh, the fundamentals of what we're doing here. So the first thing I actually want to do is do the kind of hands-on stuff, and I want to ask um, if there's anyone here, anybody at all in the platoon, who has never opened a squad before, who wants to know how so that they can do it for a PL that they like later on or whatever. So if anybody wants to do that, feel free, and I can kind of help you figure that out now. Hey, what's going on, champs? Hey, champs. What's up? Got my new PC parts, boys, and I'm fucking doing pretty swell right now. Nice, congrats. Alright, so if nobody is looking to open the squad, that's perfect. I'll start on the other stuff. Um, if there's time at the end, then if anyone still wants to, then certainly do that. But I will get started with the rest of it. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go over it really quickly. Really quickly, just so it's all in order and if anybody you know, just kind of wants a rundown, then we'll do that. So, running off my list, you know, the first thing you're going to do is go to your social tab. So you're going to hit P, I think, is by default. Now, right now, that's going to take you to our platoon screen. But when you're not in a squad or a platoon, that'll take you to the squad finder, which is what you saw before joining here. Um, and there will be a button in the bottom left of that menu that'll say create squad. You'll press that and you'll go into the squad creation menu. Now, important note that was changed, um, I want to say a couple of months ago at this point, maybe a few actually, is that squads need at least two people to open and list publicly. Um, one person doesn't do that anymore, they took that out, there's just way too many people opening up one that made the listing crowded, so that's why they did that. Next thing you're going to do is uncheck the private squad button, which is going to be another button in the squad creation menu in the bottom right. You'll click, you'll uncheck that rather, which will open up the squad description box. Um, and you need that squad, squad description filled before you can open the squad for recruitment. So fill it with anything SKL public platoon or just public squad, whatever, whatever it is you're, you're going for. Um, once that description's in, you'll hit enable recruitment, which is the, the big bar button uh, under the description. And that's that's everything. That's everything you need to open the squad. As long as you have two people and you got those, those setup things done, your squad will be listed publicly and people will be able to start um, joining. There's some other options there too, like there's the auto recruit button, which just makes it so that people with the option on as well will just join automatically. Um, and there's also the mentor button, um, which really just, it, it'll prioritize inviting people of lower rank uh, into your squads. Um, so click that if you feel like actually, you know, bringing people in, helping them out with the game. Um, but if you're kind of running more, more, uh, more sweaty or, or, you know, just kind of doing something more, more advanced, I, I wouldn't recommend that you're, you know, players that don't know as much will kind of get, uh, get a little bit alarmed by not really knowing what's going on. So just be prepared. If you're going to turn that on, make sure to really guide the players that are there. So that's opening the score. Now, the next thing I want to go through is descriptions in your squads um, that, you know, we want to see. Um, and this is especially for the Broodlords and Hivelords that are here. Um, and it's going to be, um, you know, we have a few expectations. We don't want to see, you know, big caps that are yelling at people to, to come and play and... I don't know. I, 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 I couldn't get an example of... of, of off the top of my head, but you guys know what I'm getting at. Um, 
caps are fine, you know, if you're doing a meme platoon and, and, and I don't know, you want some crazy hype going on, you'll see Orby Manager um, does that sometimes. Um, if you haven't seen him before, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. You should check one of his platoons out. Um, yeah, so Shadow Fox, I, I would question that one. I, I couldn't... I couldn't see any real reason to have that one. Um, so yeah, keep it simple, keep it, you know, inviting, keep it professional. Um, when in doubt, there is a generic SKL description in our Discord, um, this, which I'll link that Discord at the end of the training. Um, but the generic description that SKL uses is perfect, right on its own. It's just the colored green text that, that kind of is, is, is what we like there. And it's just, yeah, public platoon, oh, welcome, SKL. There we go. Thanks, Black Dragon. Um, yeah, and so that's that's that one right there. In fact, if you guys want to copy that from, from there and save it, um, highly recommended to just have a, a list of descriptions that you like, and you can just put it in right away. It's really, really nice. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of it for descriptions. Um, I know there can be some kind of, well, is this okay? Is that is that not okay? Um, so if people have questions and want to ask, um, feel free to now, otherwise I'll keep going here. Uh, do you ever, like, launch an outfit-only squad, or do you stick with public? Good question. Um, so mostly we do all public. It's, it's what we're all about, right? We're, we really try to, to cater to um, new players, new player experience. Um, but on occasion, we do do um, outfit-only things, and you'll see that mostly with our hunter killers. Hunter killers are kind of like our, our um, dedicated, cohesive uh, branch of SKL. They do some really kind of specific um, operations. They've been going for a while now, um, and they're led by uh, Rage Twisted and Calamity. If you see them around, um, they're fantastic people. Definitely go to them if you have questions about leadership or you know, tactics or, or whatever. Um, so if you see the hunter killers around, that's that's an S SKL uh, only thing. Um, but 90% of the time, I would even say 99% of the time, um, SKL does this open public uh, all the time. Cool, thanks. Richo, I've got a question for you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, higher rank in SKL to start a platoon with the SKL? No, no so actually you don't. Um, Legionnaires are free to open up um, squads and platoons. Um, you know, as long as as long as you're you're following our policies, which I'll get into um, later on, and as long as you're representing us well, you know, there's no problem. You're free to you're free to lead with our tag, um, and uh, yeah, do do whatever you want. You can play through the alert. You can have a fun time doing whatever event you can come up with. Um, like I said, just you know, following following the standards, not uh, not causing trouble, and then. Uh, and then it's all good to go. And hey, if you're interested in leadership and you're doing that kind of stuff, I um, highly recommend you join the Officer Academy, um, which uh, there's a link to that also on the Discord. Um, I can't right now, but Black Dragon or, or Sami or somebody, one of you guys wants to link. I already to posted the, it. Oh, to the to the Discord? Yep. Awesome. Cool. cool. Simple soon. Wonderful. So yeah, if you guys want to and kind of start looking at that early, feel free. Um, but yeah, so I hope I hope that answers that question. Yeah, anyway. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Okay. So there's no other questions then. I'm gonna go ahead and get into those those expectations and our policies that I was talking about earlier. Kind of give you a rundown of that. Uh, I don't expect you to, you know, write all this down um, or anything like that. Um, but it's stuff to keep in the back of your mind um, for, for what we expect when you're leading, um, especially if you plan, like I said, to, to join up in the Officer Academy as a, as a Brute Lord and kind of get started um, really learning and, and diving into all of that. Um, so this is what we expect. In no particular order, we want to see people encouraging good relationships with the other factions, with the other outfits. Um, so if you have people in your platoon, or, or if you're feeling mad at the other factions, you know, don't don't encourage hating on them. They're they're just players as well. They're on the receiving end of a lot of stuff that we do. Um, so it's it's really really good to keep um, 
keep an open mind with with how people are feeling in the game and and really try to um, really try to, to 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 foster those 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 good um, sportsmanship qualities that that we want to see right it's it's we want to keep the game thriving population of planetside is is not as big as it once was um, and even then it was quite small compared to other games so we want to retain all the players that we can not just on our faction not just on our outfit but for all the factions and all the outfits um, so really really trying to do your best there is is something to keep in mind so another thing this one is going to be specific uh, to our broodlords and up um, is the armory resources you guys have access to um, anvils and modules for our broodlords uh, hive lords you guys have access to uh, all the tactical assets in the armory um, you know don't don't spam them uh, I think it was last week I did a another training on using the armory properly and all of that so if you guys were there you know what I'm talking about um, but just very quickly you know don't don't spam them don't drop an orbital just just for the kills um, that's again it's 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 not great for us because it's, it's kind of just wasting an OS just for laughs and such. Um, and it's also, you know, it, it can be damaging to, to the fun of other people if you're just dropping it just to drop it. Um, so yeah, try to be mindful of your use of the armory. Now, this one is going to be one of my favorites. It's not really policy, not really an expectation, but a, a uh, highly encouraged idea. And that's, don't burn out, please. Um, leading takes its its toll if it's done repeated and, and long term. An hour and a half is a long time to lead. Um, I've seen people that go for, you know, eight hours in a single day and they lead and they do that for a week straight and, and then they burn out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not fun for, for them, it's not fun for anyone. You know, it's, it, I'm sure it was fun in the meantime, but long term, if you want to be able to keep your energy up, definitely pace or, or gauge rather how, how much you can lead and for how long. Um, using myself as an example, I have recently discovered that my um, energy for leading is really not all that high. I, I'll start a squad or platoon with 30 minutes left to go and alert. And I run hard because I like running hard. Um, and then that's my energy. And I hand the platoon off to someone else or I hand the squad off to someone else. Um, and then that's it. And I'll log off and I had a great time. Everyone else had a great time and I can do that again the next day if I want to. Um, but I would not be doing that if I led a full alert every single day. That's, that's not me. Um, good on you if you're one of those people that can run eight hours every day. Um, but it's not the important part. We want, we want long-term, um, energy. We don't want you guys burning out. We want you guys to do the best that you can do. All right, so the next one is actually one that was implemented fairly recently. You guys might have heard about it at the last town hall that happened, and that's our policy on bastions. Um, bastions are fun. Bastions are, are big carriers with lots of cannons, and they're fun, and they're flashy, um, and they take a lot of time to make and craft in the, the outfit armory. Um, assuming you have all the resources for it from, from capturing territories and stuff, it takes a minimum of 49 hours just to make the thing um and if you're an outfit that's not like skl where we're having resources coming all the time that can be a lot of time spent now where i'm going with this is that a lot of outfits will have kind of their their bastions and they'll spawn them and because we're skl and we can go oh there's a bastion let's just form an airball and go kill it that kind of happens a lot, and it's not fun for the people who spent all that time making bastions. It's it's just not. And then, you know, the example I, I try to give sometimes is what if what if that's a, a solo player in a, in a in a solo outfit, and they built that bastion and they wanted to see what it's like, and you know, we or another outfit or whoever forms an airball and just goes and kills it within less than five minutes, they are probably not going to want to build another bastion again. And at worst, they're going to, you know uninstall and, and log off the game, which again, it's, it's the player retention, we want to keep that experience, we want to have fun too, and we want to call Bastions, and that's why at this point the policy is, if it's the Bastions just up the warp gate, it's just spawned, you know, we don't want you guys going to kill it, um, it's just there, it's not hurting anyone, it's not even hurting the other faction at, at this point, um, 
But, that said, the minute it comes to our front, the minute it starts dealing damage with its big baller cannons, um, that's the green light. You guys can go ahead, form an air ball, because at that point it has engaged in combat. Whoever is piloting the Bastion has, by, by shooting us, agreed to combat. Um, and so that's the idea of what we're pushing for. It keeps the experience good for everyone, um, and it means that we can kind of keep, uh, keep people around and ha having fun with their Bastions as well. I am grateful to you. All right, are there any questions on that one specifically or the other ones I talked about? I have a, less of a question, more of an observation. My sure. own personal methodology for dealing with enemy bastions is let them try and kill us as we take the enemy base underneath them. It's a bit of a risky move, but it's a lot more fun. Yeah, I mean, if that's what you enjoy, go for it. Um... Yeah, definitely form an airball or, or engage in the, the frenzy and the chaos and just uh, run into the base under it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, if there's no questions, then awesome. Um, so the next one is going to be um, on backseat platoon leading. There's, you know, every so often there will be, you know, so it normally happens to new platoon leaders or new squad leaders, and they'll be leading and they're doing their best, and people who might be, you know, with good intentions or, or not, will sometimes um, overstep their boundaries and offer a little bit too much advice um, or, or worse, you know, try and, and undermine the, the lead's authority altogether. Um, I don't want to see that um, ever. It's, it's just not nice when, when the platoon leader's leading, it's their turn. They make the decisions. You can offer support, of course. You can offer suggestions if they want it. Um, but if the, the platoon lead can't do their job, um, they can't provide a good experience for anyone, um, including yourself. So keep that in mind when you're playing in a platoon, watch and see how much are you talking on comms. Are you, are you, are you maybe cluttering up the comms a little bit too much with not very you know, useful information on the alert? Um, and yeah, so really try and contribute to, to the platoon lead or the squad lead. Don't don't backseat. You know, like I said, offer support. Offer support at all times. In the platoon, in in platoons where I've seen that everybody follows this idea, it doesn't matter that that you know if if you lose the alert because the point was everyone was together. We were cohesive. We tried our best, um, and there was a whole lot of awesome stuff that happened along the way. But it can't happen if the platoon is divided on what to do or, or how things are going. Yeah, don't don't scream, medic. There's a there's a quick chat for that. Um, yeah, there's so that's, that's there's a fine line between encouraging somebody and helping somebody and giving somebody advice and being a bully. We don't want to see you being bullies out there. That makes people leave. It makes people not want to play if they feel like you know they're they're the platoon lead, but they've got told people screaming at them that they should be doing this, but they should be doing this, but they should. Be, it, it becomes a serious problem if your voice is heard in the platoon more than the platoon leader is giving orders. That's when it becomes a serious issue. Help people, don't bully them. Yeah, 100%, exactly. Yeah, and if, kind of to, to, to build on that, if there's a lead and you're just really not enjoying the platoon, and you're going, like, I, I, I just can't do this anymore, I'm, I'm not enjoying it, leave. It's, it's that simple. There, there is nothing you can do um, if the platoon lead doesn't want to change their mind about a decision that is going to help the platoon. So the best that you guys can do um, as leaders, as supporters of the lead who's currently in the platoon or squad lead spot is leave and if you feel like it, write up a, um, you know, submit a report or, or write some feedback to SKL. Both those forms um, are in the Discord chat. One of them is a form, one of them is a channel for emergencies. If there's something that's really bad going on, you need to take it to care of it like immediately. Um, but right feedback is usually the, the best way to go about that, and we'll see it. We always do, um, and you know we, we make changes or, or we we talk to people, whatever needs to be done. Um, but always, always, always make sure that you're having fun, um, but not at the expense of others. And that also means leaving the platoon if you need to um, before you find yourself backseating. The lead is what I'm getting at there. Okay, 
Next on the list is the voice channels. I talked about that a little bit already to, to you know, not, uh, not clear up the comms, but it goes um, to kind of build on that. If the platoon lead is talking, it's, it's you know, unless it's something really important, it's, it's not the time to call out that one C4 that just threw, uh, you know, flew through the door or, or the max that's incoming. If it's a platoon lead, if what the platoon lead is saying is important, if they're giving a new order or something like that, um, the platoon lead has to take priority. You know, it's, it's, it's not, um, it's healthy for the whole platoon if the platoon lead or squad lead gets to speak their mind first, um, and then everybody else can make the tactical callouts, and then we can have idle chatter. Um, that's kind of the hierarchy that I like to look at it, you know, if it's just a really easy mode to learn for everybody just having fun and memeing a little bit, um, you know, that, that part of this is going to change. But for the most part, you know, we do a lot of alerts in SKL, and so that's that's kind of the idea. It's the platoon first, then tactical callouts, um, well, it's first the platoon lead, and then the squad leads, then kind of the, the tactical callouts and, and suggestions from, from the rest of the platoon, and then idle chatter. Uh, it just keeps everything running, running smoothly. So always have that in the back of your mind when, when you're talking in, in the comms as well. Alright, and lastly here, uh, not quite last, second last thing, is that in Scale, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this, we are very much open to new players, right? We try to invite them all in and teach them to grow our player base and, and share the joy that we all get from playing this game. Um, and so what I don't want to see is people seeing new player and asking questions and people going, oh, well, that should be obvious to you. Don't you know how to do that? Um, you know, stuff like that. We don't want to see that. If, if someone isn't sure what to do, help them out. Or if you're not sure or, or you know, if, if, if you don't know the answer to a question, then, then find someone else who, who can't help them. Anything is far better than, than bringing them down or, or making them feel like they should know things um, or that you know everything there is to know or stuff like that. So it goes again to, to really helping the community, bringing them in, um, and really following the, the mission that SKL has, which you know in part of that is, is helping out the new players, um, whatever skill level you may, you may be at, whether you're a new player yourself, you know, in which case learn from, from the good people that, that are trying to, to help out and participate in things. If you're more of a senior player here, you know, please, like, share your knowledge. It's fantastic. We all love it. Um, and, yeah, that's that's really going to help. But don't, don't bring people down. Bring them up.